You might know or not know that I have quite a collection of old Japanese books and magazines and of course they mostly contain kimono because pre-Second World War Japan up to 90% of women were still wearing kimono as daily clothing. And I made a huge purchase of a sewing book that is from Meiji era and a lot of you have asked me to share some of its contents and I thought why not making a video about how I am actually gonna open it up for the first time. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. You might have noticed from previous video that I speak Japanese fluently and I might have mentioned it once or twice. I'm also working as a professional translator, which means, and it's really embarrassing to say it by myself, I have a very high level of Japanese that makes it possible for me to work with very, very old books, magazines and other literature. Of course, I have to stress that the Japanese language was changing a lot throughout the last century, is especially and when changing from Edo period into the Meiji era, there were a lot of changes made to the language. It also took a while for those changes to settle. And then I think after, a, after the war, they finally came to the stage where you can read modern Japanese at, as it is modern Japanese. And what you study in university, you usually learn modern Japanese. So you learn the after war Japanese and you will have to get into reading 30s, 20s books. Meiji era again is then a little closer to Edo period, which means it's a little closer to even older Japanese. So we're gonna jump into uh, the book. I'm gonna wear a mask and um, please forgive me, but I have a very sensitive nose and I don't wanna throw up in front of the camera. We are also gonna move because I wanna have nice shots of the inside of the book. Let's go. So it's two books, it's a set. Um, it says Saiho uh, Kyokasho, which means sewing, studying book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sewing textbook, it's a sewing textbook. And it's written by Tani, Tanitabe Junko. And she obviously got married between those two books because her last name changed to Imamura Junko. I'm gonna open up the first book. Why is this so exciting? <laughs> ah. Completely. I'm afraid it's gonna end on the box. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm so glad I wore I wear my mask. Ah. Mm-hmm. It smells even though I'm wearing the mask. <laughs> um, let me check on the back. Oh someone wrote into it. Oh no. It says it is from Meiji, Ju Sanju Sannen. So it starts with a story of how the otoko mono. Shots. Oh my gosh. It also has like normal clothing in it as well. Oh, it has a hakama. Oh, yeah. I wanted a hakama. I wanted a hakama. Koso de shitate kata. There were... She's using the word koso de. Usually koso de is what um, kimono are called in history. Koso de actually was initially um, what was worn as a first layer directly on your skin. At least that's what I found in other books that in the Heian era. And later it was worn directly on skin. And kosode is very close to what a kimono looks today. 
and it became to in turn into something that was worn on top. And you can see throughout every garment history that people tend to dress themselves with their undergarment on top. I mean, look at t-shirts and hot pants and that stuff. So those are undergarments, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> so this course on it, because it doesn't really, this doesn't actually show me or tell me, this book doesn't tell me when it's supposed to be worn. So it's really interesting. Then we have a yogi. And it has a Otona Choshi Bakama. Yes. Oh, 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 this is so nice and old. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just in case anyone, anyone's watching here and can read Japanese, be assured that very old Japanese, when it's written horizontal, because usually you write Japanese vertically and you start from right to left. That's how you write Japanese. And when they started to write um, horizontally, which is probably Meiji era, like really old books, that you have to read from right to left as well. <laughs> so this part here says not riko no, it's no ko ri, which means it's just left over. Same as here. And stuff you should know when working with old books. You get used to it. Cute. Oh, it's a maegake. Yosai maegake. So she says this is already Western clothing. This is Western clothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say that too. Yeah. It's not a maetare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just totally tell I'm not a fan of. Western sewing, can you see this? There's so much left over from the fabric. And when we turn back to the haori, there's nearly nothing left over from the fabric. The, she says there is a little left over, but usually you sew it into it or you just keep it. And later when there's a hole, you can use it for making the hole a little less visible. Why are you reading, <laughs> writing into the book? Ah, this is really old handwriting. And you know, I can tell it by the bottom here. This is like really, really, really old Japanese used to look like, and no Japanese is writing like this anymore. There we are already getting into a few kanji I have never seen before. I will have to research what this actually means. I have absolutely no clue. Ah, I got it. It just means like this above because it means so de so de. Mai migoro, oh, shiru migoro, mai migoro, shiru migoro, mai migoro. Oh, is it a hifu? Haori hifu. It's a hifu. Hifu is uh, the small coat that three-year-old three girls were for their three-year-old ceremony. They have a ceremony for three, five, and seven years. And in Komodo, we actually have them for three, four, five, and seven. And they wear a hifu, which is this one. And actually in Meiji era, I still have pictures of women wearing a hifu, adult women. So it's, it's really interesting. Oh yeah, hakama. Finally, we are into the hakama. This is what I was hoping for. I so want to try this. Um, I have been to the library a few times because they have huge sewing books there in the Komodo City Library. And I've been th through a few of them. Um, most of them so precious that you actually can't borrow them and ah, it's it's sad but all of them don't contain a hakama so i was really looking for a very long time on how to make a hakama and this is just great this is just great oh my god <laughs> i can't wait wait to make it
she was riding with with a fude into this I just lost the English word I'm just so amazed <laughs> can you imagine that all Japanese used fude like every single day and now it's like it's like ball pens I'm about to cry I don't know if it's the book but <laughs> this just kind of touched me so so much when I just saw this fude here oh my god <laughs> must be old handwriting <laughs> It's it's a it's old book like it's not it's it's an old sewing textbook which means it's not too detailed but it has a lot of pictures in it which is very important because the other um, book I have from Taisho just has no pictures at all so you can't really work with it ah uh, this one ah. Ah, uh, this one was the yogi. Oh, I'm not gonna make one. <laughs> one day I'm gonna make one. Yogi was a kimono you put on yourself when sleeping. It's like you slept in a kimono, but you actually put it on yourself. I'm gonna look. Oh, Mayunabe has Mayunabe Sensei. She's um, one of my friends. You might know her. She's giving historical dressing lessons. She has um, she has a picture. She has illustration in a major period sewing book of this, how this was put on. So I'm going to ask her if I may use this for this video. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> It's a momohiki! It is a momohiki! Oh my gosh, after I made my Hakama video where I talked about kimono trousers and their history, so many of you reached out to me if I have a sewing pattern of a momohiki, which is some kind of a Hakama. It's not, but it's, it's a kimono trousers. It's trousers you wear under a kimono, and I officially have now. This is a momohiki. This is what we all love about old sewing books that contain the old stuff that no one's wearing anymore. I mean, momohiki, you could buy them if you wanted to because they're still worn from time to time. But you never really find some instructions how to really make them. And as this is like midst Meiji era where still that stuff was worn more often, um, it's like the most authentic sewing instructions you can actually get, which is amazing. Oh, we're, we're done. Oh, oh wow. This was real, real fun. This was like amazing. So this is the second part of this. But it was really dusty. Look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so dusty. I probably should um, clean the brush first before I move on. Okay, we have the second. It still has little silver on it. So it act well, probably had some silver cover. I don't know if you can see it. What are you containing? So let's start with what this book is containing. Shitotsumi. Okay, kid stuff. Shitotsumi. Juban. Uh, undergarment. Um, hitotsumi, hitotsumi, mitsumi, it's also kids. Then we have yotsumi, which is also kids. We have another mitsumi, 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 hitotsumi. Hondachi hitoe otokomono, we have a hitoe otokomono. That's true, we didn't have a single kimono, we had kosode in the other book. Um, what else do we have? Kotomo obi, so we have an obi for kids. Then we have a hondachi ona awase, which is a normal adult kimono awase, and for men too. I am a, a little bit, a little bit disappointed, just a little bit, because there is another sewing book from Meiji from Meiji era I actually want to have, and it's a it's I wouldn't say it's more detailed, but it has like a little more 
stuff in it that I would use for my big secret project I'm starting to work on for this year. But yeah, so it's, it's a little, it's a little bit disappointing because it doesn't have any of that, of that contents, but we're fine. We're fine. We're going to get through it and we're going to see. Oh, so sweet. She's starting with Unshin and I love the picture. And I just love the hairstyle what the girl's wearing. And yeah, it looks super decent. I think I should read that. Oh, okay. How to tie. Uh, I'm so bad at tying those knots when sewing. I'm, st I'm still, I'm still trying it. They have like, they wrap it around the finger and then roll it a little and then it's tied up. It's, I don't know if it's also, you know, that I never learned how to sew in Europe. So I don't know if it's used somewhere else, but Japanese song teachers are actually using that. Oh, it actually also starts with, why is this one so much more detailed than the first one? This also starts with how to sew in different sewing techniques. And this is interesting. It doesn't differ from what I'm learning at sewing school because Vasai never really changed. So when I go through old sewing books, the way to sew is basically the same. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's not that hard. It's very really good to actually know that there are some things that didn't change, but she's also not providing a centimeter. Um, no, she's not. She's totally going with the Japanese sizes, which is cool. Um, because my, my others, my other older sewing books actually tell you how many centimeter your Japanese measurement would be. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. Oh, she also tells you how to get the corners. Awesome. Awesome. Um, much more detail than the earlier one. I wonder why, what happened? I think those books are about 10 years apart. I'm not sure. Um, no, the first time was out in Yeonjunin, which means they are about seven years apart. So something happened in those seven years. She got way more, way more, way more detail. I am really gonna, I want to see how she actually tells me how to do the Fuki because Fuki are a pain. Oh my gosh, isn't this so dang cute? Oh, that girl is actually wearing a hakama. So it's, yeah, they learned sewing, obviously, in school. And what is this? Embroidery. Is this embroidery? Ah, is it probably simuli? Ah, yeah, as I thought. <laughs> It's for the same one. Oh my gosh, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> oh, everything that is like, just shows how old this book is, just makes me extremely happy. But it's in super good condition, by the way. It's better than the other one. <laughs> oh, it's getting really bad. Ah. Oh. If I wouldn't shoot here, I would actually stop and just not touch it for until tomorrow, I think. Um, yeah, be careful always about when you're, um, when you touch old things and your body is telling you something is not fine, just stop right there and get to it another day, recharge your batteries because even with house dust, your, um, body is only able to deal with a certain amount so well um when you ever have been to japan you know how cold japanese houses are because they have like no isolation or so whatsoever and in history they wore a kimono that had in between the lining and the outer layer um, vata. It's like a layer of clothing cotton to keep people warm. And this is obviously 
how to make it and on April the 1st you're about to wear a kimono without that um, so there is actually a last name in Japanese which is written April the 1st and you call them watanuki and watanuki means actually take out uh, the cotton padding <laughs> Um, honestly, if I would live in um, that century, so Meiji era, I actually would have found the second book why, way more helpful than the first book. So I have to stop here because I'm about not to be able to talk anymore. So we're gonna put these two back into their homes. Um, I hope, really hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna put them back in their homes and I'm gonna take my mask off to say proper goodbye. Mm, 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 mm. So I hope this video was a little interesting. I'm totally dying with my nose here. I definitely wanna open up the window and um, clean this table in front of me. Dust from more than 100 years ago is killing me. I'm not sure if I was crying because I was happy or if I'm crying because the dust is just too crazy. Um, you can count on me referring to these books in some of my future projects or at least most of the projects I have Coming up for this year, I am super excited. There is a huge secret project I'm um, working on that I am not sure when I will be able to um, actually publish it. So it's probably gonna be next year. Not I will work on it this year and publish it for you next year. I don't know, we'll see. Um, it's gonna be a huge thing. Um, if you wanna see more videos like this and you're looking forward to my future projects, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want to learn more from a certified kimono teacher and yeah I won't talk to you next week because I am taking a little vacation again <laughs> so probably the week after that in my next video bye